If you're wondering if robots would be good pleasure dolls, then this recap is for you! Welcome back to Popcorn Recap. Today we'll be diving back into the events of the 2014 science fiction movie titled Ex Machina. Caleb is a bright young computer programmer at Blue Book, a search engine company run by an exclusive CEO named Nathan. Caleb is selected to participate in a one-week visit to meet Nathan at his remote estate one day while sitting at his computer. Caleb is given a personal keycard at the security gate when he arrives at the house. Nice keycards, by the way. Caleb works his way through the first floor of the house until he comes across Nathan exercising outside. Caleb is surprised to discover that he lives alone, and has a Bruce casual and narcissistic temperament. Well, what do you expect from someone with Drake's beard? Nathan informs Caleb that he's working on developing artificial intelligence, specifically a robot named Ava that's designed to pass the Turing test, which determines whether a robot can pass for a human. However, Caleb must first sign the Blue Book non-disclosure agreement, which he is hesitant to sign due to the bizarre request he's expected to follow. Nathan successfully convinces Caleb to sign the agreement after some persuasion. Caleb asks what the Turing test is after he signs the agreement. Nathan believes that if a human is unaware that they're interacting with a computer, the computer has passed the test and has artificial intelligence. Ooh, sounds oddly familiar with Google's recent events. Nathan then informs Caleb that he will be the human component in a test to determine whether or not the AI Ava created can pass the test. Caleb is enthralled by this project and claims that if it is approved, it will be the history of gods. Caleb inspects the area outside the room where Ava is kept before the first session begins. He notices a crack in the reinforced glass wall barrier between him and Ava. Ava appeared to be attempting to flee her room. Caleb seems like a gullible ginger man who doesn't sense any danger at all. Ava walks into Caleb's line of sight as he looks up. She has the face and hands of a woman, but the body of a machine. You can see her transparent tummy with LED lights on. Ava greets Caleb and tells him she's only met Nathan before. She asks him if he's met many new people, and he says no one like her. He diverts the conversation and informs her that they need to break the ice. Caleb inquires as to when she learned to speak, and she responds that she has always known how to speak. They debate whether or not this is unusual, given that Ava believes language is something that only people learn. Caleb responds that language may exist from birth, and that what is learned is how to form language into conversations. Having deep conversations with a sentient robot is absolutely freaky. Their first session is now complete. Caleb is fascinated by his encounter and is discussing it with Nathan as they share a beer. He tells Nathan that speaking with Ava was like looking through a looking glass. Instead of delving deeper into what Caleb meant, Nathan simply compliments him on being quotable and good with words. Later that night, unable to sleep, Caleb decides to monitor what Ava is doing via the monitoring system in his room. Maybe he's expecting to see some late night robot fiddling. As he watches her, the power goes out, and Caleb is unable to leave his room until the main generator is restarted. The power is quickly restored, and Caleb exits his room. As he walks down the hall, he notices a wall lined with face replicas. He walks into a room that contains a Jackson Pollock painting. Caleb discovers a phone and attempts to use it before being startled by Nathan, who's laying on the couch drinking a beer. Maybe he's the one who's doing some late night fiddling. Nathan claims he can't use the phone due to Ava's protocols, while Caleb claims there was a power outage in his room and he couldn't get out. Nathan dismisses Caleb's concern, stating only that they've been having them recently and that he's working on the problem. The next morning, a pretty Asian woman enters Caleb's room. She leaves him a plate of coffee without saying anything and avoids making eye contact with him. Caleb walks outside to where Nathan is lifting weights. He apologizes for bringing Kyoko into his room, but he didn't want Caleb to oversleep. Caleb begins the next session with Ava, with her showing him pictures she's drawn. She's frustrated because she draws every day but has no idea what the drawings are. She then switches the subject and asks Caleb if he wants to be her friend, but she warns him that their conversations will be one-sided. Ava asks Caleb if he likes Nathan, and he says yes. She delves deeper into the issue of whether Nathan is a good friend to Caleb. Quite nosy for a robot, isn't she? Caleb is stumped as he tries to come up with an appropriate response because Nathan is actually a jerk to him. When the power goes out, Ava takes advantage of Nathan's inability to hear or see the conversation and tells Caleb that he shouldn't trust Nathan. The power is restored before Caleb can ask Ava what she meant. Ava immediately begins talking about books so Nathan isn't suspicious of what she said while the power was out. Caleb takes a moment to recover from what happened, but he continues and agrees with Ava about books. Caleb discovers at dinner that Kyoko does not speak English. Nathan claims it's a security precaution because she won't understand the projects he's working on. Nathan says that because of all the security measures, it's too difficult to get people to come to fix it and that after the last job, he had all those men killed. Caleb looks up at Nathan, concerned, waiting for the punchline. But there is no punchline, so it must be true. Nathan only cracks a weak smile. Caleb grows close to Ava during their conversations, 
and she expresses a romantic interest in him as well as a desire to explore the world outside. She has the ability to cause power outages that temporarily disable Nathan's surveillance system, allowing them to speak privately. Power outages also activate the building's security system, which locks all the doors. Ava tells Caleb during one of the outages that Nathan is a liar who cannot be trusted. Nathan's narcissism, excessive drinking, and crude behavior toward Kyoko and Ava make Caleb uncomfortable. He discovers Nathan's plan to upgrade Ava while killing her current personality. Caleb steals Nathan's security card after encouraging him to drink until he passes out in order to gain access to his room and computer. He modifies some of Nathan's code and discovers footage of Nathan sexually interacting with previous android models. Now that's an upgrade from the ancient hentai movies. He goes to the closets and open each one revealing the other AI models. Kyoko informs him that she too is an android. Kyoko peels off her synthetic skin and shows her haggard robotic insides to Caleb. Maybe even a jade gua sha won't fix her skin after this revelation. Nathan stumbles through the house, attempting to open a door that leads to his bedroom. He can't find his keycard and believes he's dropped it as he falls to the floor. The electrical door opens and Caleb steps out. Nathan informs him that he's lost his key. Caleb kneels next to Nathan and tells him that he's dropped the key. Nathan is duped by this trick because he's extremely drunk. Sleek trick, man. Caleb, alone in his room, cuts open his own arm until it bleeds. He gets confused about the events and wants to know if he's a real human or just another android that's become sentient. His arm bleeds, and that's when he realizes what Nathan is up to. He smears his blood onto the mirror and gives off a weird facial reaction. Ava turns off the power at their next meeting. Caleb explains Nathan's plan, and Ava begs him to assist her. They devise a plan. Caleb will get Nathan drunk again and reprogram the security system to open the doors instead of locking them in the event of a power outage. Nathan walks into the kitchen the next morning and greets Caleb, reminding him that it's his last day and that the helicopter is scheduled to pick him up the next morning. Nathan expresses his pleasure at having Caleb visit his estate, and Caleb cheerfully thanks him for his hospitality as he walks to the fridge and pulls out a bottle to pour Nathan a drink. He tries to hand the drink to Nathan to celebrate his stay, but he refuses. Confused, he tries to offer him a beer, but he still refuses. Nathan has been drinking too much and wants to go on a detox. Caleb is defeated and drinks alone. Nathan changes the subject to Ava, who is wondering if she passed the test. Caleb agrees quietly. Nathan is pleased with this response and returns to an earlier discussion about whether Ava was pretending to like Caleb. Nathan observes that Ava most likely pretended to like Caleb because she saw him as a way out. He asks Caleb to accompany him out of the kitchen so he can show him something. Nathan informs Caleb that he has been listening in on their private conversations with a battery-powered camera. He claims that Ava is only pretending to like Caleb so he could assist her in escaping. This, he claims, was the true test all along. And by successfully manipulating Caleb, Ava has demonstrated true intelligence. Kyoko enters Ava's room. She meets her for the first time. The two sentients communicate through whisper and eye contact. Maybe this is the most digital they can ever be. When Ava turns off the power, Caleb reveals that he had suspected Nathan was watching them and had modified the security system while Nathan was unconscious. Nathan knocks Caleb unconscious and rushes to stop Ava when she escapes from her confinement. Nathan walks into the hallway, and the women exchange understanding glances. Both women exchange blank stares with him. He sends Ava back to her room, and when she asks if he'll ever let her out, Nathan lies and says he will. Ava realizes he's lying and begins to approach him. He tells her to stop, but she ignores Nathan and begins running towards him. As he continues to yell at her to stop, she charges straight for him. She throws him to the ground and tries to choke him real hard. How can you choke an android? Nathan magically overpowers the metal gal. Nathan hits Ava with his mysterious stick that can easily damage robots. I guess it's like a super tool to fend off robots. She blocks the head with her arm, breaking it off. Nathan begins dragging Ava back to her room when Kyoko stabs him in the back. Ava then stabs and kills Nathan with the help of Kyoko, but in the process, Nathan disables Kyoko's jaw and injures Ava. Ava repairs herself with parts from previous androids, using their artificial skin to resemble a human woman. She abandons Caleb inside the facility and flees to the outside world in the helicopter that was supposed to transport him home. When she arrives in an unfamiliar city, she blends in with a crowd. Ava returns to Caleb and asks him to stay in Nathan's room while she goes exploring. She discovers the same closets that Caleb did, which are filled with the other robot bodies. Ava uses the robot's arm to repair herself. She begins removing the synthetic skin from the robot to place on her body. And when she's finished, she has the body of a female human, just like Kyoko. And damn, she's pretty hot. She gets dressed and leaves Caleb inside to die. The poor ginger can't even fathom how brutal Ava can be. She exits the estate and walks outside for the first time, taking everything in. Ava makes her way to the helicopter and departs from the world she once knew. In the end, Caleb is left behind in the room and Ava makes her way to the city. So yeah, if you're still wondering if robots would make good pleasure dolls, 
Maybe, and maybe they'd kill you as well. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.